we now have a definite integral going from x equals zero to x equals square root of pi of x sine of x squared dx. So the first thing that you might want to ask yourself is, is whether u substitution is appropriate here. And if it is, what would you set u to be equal to? I'll let you think about that for a second. Well, we see here this expression x squared. And if we were to just take the derivative of x squared, it would be 2x. We have an x here, so it's almost a 2x. To turn this x into 2x, we could multiply it by 2. We can't just only multiply it by 2, because that would change the value of this entire expression. We'd also have to multiply by 1 half. So all I've done so far is I've multiplied by 2 and by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1. I have not changed the value of this entire definite integral. Now, let's do our u substitution. If we set u is equal to x squared, u is equal to x squared, we now know that du, du is going to be equal to 2x dx. And so what can we see here? Well, we have our u there. That's how we defined it. And our du is going to be 2x times dx. So this in, entire inside, or the thing that we're taking the integral of, the definite integral of, is going to be, we can rewrite it as sine, sine of x squared, but x squared is just u. So sine of u, and instead of 2x dx, we know that 2x dx is now du, du. So the thing that we're taking the integral of in terms of u can be expressed this way, and so, we have our integral. But these boundaries of integration were written in terms of x. We could have written this as x is equal to 0 to x is equal to square root of pi. Now we want to write them in terms of u. And let me not forget that I had this 1 half sitting out here. So how do we write it in terms of u? So this, when x is equal to 0, what is u going to be equal to? This boundary is when x equals 0. Well, when x is equal to 0, u is also equal to 0. So this is from u equals 0. This is the same boundary. When x is equal to 0, u is equal to 0 based on how we defined u. Now what about here? What is u equal to when x is equal to the square root of pi? Well, u is equal to the square root of pi squared. Let me write this down. u is going to be equal to, is going to be equal to the square root of pi squared when x is equal to the square root of pi which is just equal to pi. So this is going to be from u equals 0 to u equals pi. I didn't have to explicitly write this u equals here, but that makes it a little bit clearer. Our boundaries are now written in terms of u. And so we are now ready to, we are now ready to evaluate this indefinite integral. So this whole thing is going to be equal to 1 half times times the expression. Well, what's the antiderivative of sine of u? Well, the derivative of cosine of u, let me write it over here. d dx, or maybe I should write in terms of u, d du cosine of u is equal to negative, negative sine, negative sine of u. So the derivative, derivative of negative cosine of u is equal to sine of u, is equal to sine of u. So the antiderivative of sine of u is negative cosine of u. Negative, negative cosine of u. And we're going to evaluate that from at u equals pi. And from that, we're going to subtract it, evaluate it at u equals 0. u equals 0. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times well, what happens when we evaluate it at u equals pi? Negative cosine of pi. Cosine of pi, if we just, I always have to redraw my unit circles here. So cosine of pi, we're at this point on the unit circle. Cosine is the x-coordinate. Cosine of pi is, let me just write it down. It's going to be negative cosine of pi. And then from that, we are going to subtract this evaluated when u equals 0. So minus. So minus negative cosine, negative cosine of 0, not cosine of theta. That's what it's going to be equal to, and now we're ready to evaluate it. Cosine of pi is negative 1, but then we have this negative out front, so this whole thing will evaluate to 1. Cosine of 0, 
cosine of zero is one. And then we, we're subtracting a negative one, which is the exact same thing as adding a one. So this whole thing also becomes a positive one. And so in here we have one plus one times one half. So this whole thing simplifies to, ready for our drum roll, one. And you see, when we did u substitution with a definite integral, as long as we changed our boundaries in terms of u, we didn't have to go and then undo the substitution. We didn't even have to go and convert back into x. We were able to evaluate the definite integral in terms of u.